Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. I'm Vincent Chan. In this video, I'm going to teach you BJT differential amplifier part two, input resistance, and the small signal differential gain. In the previous lecture video, I mentioned briefly mentioned about the age when I first taught electronics to college students. You might be wondering, I said I was 22 years old, it was 1985. So you might be wondering, Vincent was Vincent High was Vincent volunteer or Vincent a teaching assistant? No. No, I was a teacher. I was a hire. I was on stage. I was teaching differential amplifier with so so not great teaching skill. All right. So today, I hope you won't forget what I taught you um, last time in a previous video about how to use three steps to conquer to become super easy to tackle this kind of differential. Amplify. Super important, but we use the super easy way. Small signal analysis. Let's quickly review. This three steps. Total resistance, Ohm's law, and remember the counter clockwise. Three steps. And then emit resistance, 2RE. So 2RE, let me ask you, first ask you, what is RE? How to get RE? Who decide RE? The AC parameter, AC small signal resistance, small signal resistance has been determined by what? By DC bias. So where is bias? Where is bias operating point? So what's the value around the operating point? At the operating point, have IQ. So you just plug in, therefore, for this reason, you just plug in the half IQ into the denominator, the formula, the DC emit the current. Then you get this result. Bear with me for a few minutes. Uh, let me pause. I, I, I'm kind of, I need some water, okay? Sorry, I, I really need water. All right, so see, this is my my favorite mug. Let me let me just pull pull out. This is my favorite mug. See, it's it's broken. <laughs> my favorite mug is broken, and my wife asked me many times to buy a new one for me. I said no. I just love this one, a broken mug. <laughs> All right. So where were we? We were. Around the, the emitter resistance, right? I, I said AC resistance has to be determined by the DC bias. Where is bias? The operating point, the half IQ. So plug in the half IQ into the DC emitter current, then you can have this. So you need to know how to decide the small signal emitter resistance by the bias current, okay? Two thermal voltage divided by the bias current. So higher bias current, smaller emitter resistance. So now, in this lecture, I'm going to teach you so how to calculate the input differential resistance. First is the definition. The input differential resistance is the input resistance, but across, it's not single-ended. Sometimes we said the single-ended from looking into this terminal means what? means this terminal between this terminal, between input terminal and the ground. But there are two input terminals. So between, and, and only two, and it resistance a two terminal device, right? So between two terminal, the resistance between two differential input terminal. And looking into base, it's defined as input differential resistance, denoted by the ID, again. It's the resistance between two differential input terminal and looking into base. 
looking into base. So it's the base perspective. It's the base perspective, not emitter perspective anymore. It's the base perspective. So it's simple. Why? Just resistance refraction rule. Because teacher, Vincent, you just remind me over and over again. It's the base. So I took the emitter component and reflect to base times one plus beta. So here's the answer. So one plus beta times total emitter resistance. If you do this seriously by definition, it's the total differential input voltage divided by base perspective. So base input current. And substitute the base current with the emitter current divided by one plus beta. And VD over IE is the two RE. Then you got this. Let's look at this again. No problem. Right? So input, if you have any doubt on this, then you have to go back to the small signal equivalent circuit. So based on the small signal equivalent circuit, I said this earlier, resistance RR, triple R, resistance reflection rule. Right? So the base current is the emitter current divided by one plus beta. Resistance reflection rule. I still encourage you, once you get very familiar and confident about this, just next time, analysis by inspection. Do this more efficiently, uh, more in a, in a more uh, efficient way. The second parameter I, I want to illustrate is the differential voltage gain. So let's say if we have the differential output, of course you can define left minus right or right minus left. It really up to the designer. So let's say if we define left minus right, VC1 minus VC2. So negative minus positive becomes negative. Okay, negative 10 minus 10 means negative 20, all right? So negative means what? Means out of phase. Then we have the differential output, then differential input. So now it's the differential voltage gain. It's the differential voltage gain. So if you are struggling to put this relationship together, then you might need to write down the RE, the relationship between RE and the transconductance. All right, the RE can equals the alpha divided by the transconductance. So this is very simple and a beautiful result. Also super easy. So next time, you might not need to do step by step. You might be able to just boom. What boom? First, decide phase. Left is inverting, right is non-inverting. Inverting minus non-inverting, keep the negative sign. Non-inverting minus inverting, drop the minus sign, use the positive. So decide phase, in phase or out of phase. Alpha, 0.99, it's not that important in terms of the accuracy of the value. So the key is the phase and who is on the numerator and who is on the denominator. So who is on the numerator? The total collector resistance, let's go back. Who is on the denominator? The total emitter resistance. So total collectors, collector resistance on the top, and total emitter resistance, put the total emitter resistance to RE in the denominator. All right, here's the takeaway. The first, remember the definition of the input Differential resistance is the base perspective. You can be confident and use the resistance 
refraction rule. Just take the total emitted resistance. Actually, it's the first step when you conduct the first the small signal analysis, right? First step, total emitted. Just put it back to the base times one plus beta. Second takeaway: positive or negative decide phase. If left minus right, negative. If right minus left, left positive. Decide negative or positive in phase of our all of phase. Decide, decide positive or negative. And then what? I say inverting minus non-inverting. Keep the negative sign. Non-inverting minus inverting drop the negative sign. And then this purple line is this line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I just want to help you make the lecture more interesting. Okay. So total the one on the top, just put it on the top. <laughs> the one on the bottom, just put it into the bottom. Okay. So total collector resistances in the numerator and total emitter resistance in the the nominator so next time you can be confident just use this this kind of analysis by inspection which will make your learning more interesting and last longer and you got motivated because you learned something you got rewarded right inside from the inside okay be confident to boost your confidence i give you homework okay you don't have to send me okay Let's give you a homework. Go ahead. Just put it, put down this. Practice differential gain. Now I, it's defined as right minus left. So differential out, right minus left, divided by differential in. What will be the answer? Analysis by inspection. Use the skill I just taught you. Analysis by inspection and solve this within one minute. Okay. Solve this within one minute. Oh, already have your, I, I, I prepare answer. Okay, let me show you. So, okay, let's do this. Improvise, time out. One minute, time out. Take this photo from the, the just time out. You just pause, time out, and put down the answer. I, I will, so we will be back in one minute. All right, I'm back. This is the answer. Positive alpha. Total collector resistance on top. What is the total collector resistance? The two R1 in series and in parallel with R1. What's on the bottom? The one on the bottom is the internal in series with external. Internal is two RE. The series with, series with the external to R2 in parallel with R2. All right. So we come to the end of this lecture video. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.